What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are going to be talking about some more zero waste things that you can do, but specifically free ways to reduce your waste and plus save you some money. So I am a big believer that, that living a low waste or zero waste lifestyle does not have to cost you a lot of money. And in reality, I think a lot of zero waste practices come from that idea of frugal living, honestly based out of necessity for a lot of people. There are a lot of zero waste practices that you see kind of glamorized that people have been practicing for years. I mean, a lot of times these are practices that your grandparents were doing or even your great grandparents that they were doing for years out of necessity. Being low waste, zero waste, yes, you can have it this glamorized way where it's like the Instagram perfect profile of all of these zero waste things that you can buy and use, but there also is the more practical approach to zero waste and low waste, which can save you money in the long run. I've compiled a list of things that I personally do to save money and things that with a bit of effort, if you have the time and the resources available to you, I think that you could also implement these things into your lifestyle. So let's just hop into all of the free ways that you can reduce your waste. Number one is super simple and I get a lot of satisfaction out of doing this because it's almost creating something from actual waste. So that is to keep your kitchen scraps whenever you're cooking, um, stems, cores, peels, all that kind of stuff. Keep that stuff. So the two things that I use my kitchen scraps to make are vinegar and vegetable broth. Vegetable broth is super simple made at home. It's just water and vegetables simmered together for an allotted amount of time until it's reached the flavor. You add a bit of salt, you can add some more herbs and flavorings into it. You can really make it your own and depending on which vegetable scraps you use, it will have a different flavor. So you can kind of experiment with that and see what tastes best according to you. I actually have a more in-depth video of doing this, so I will link that video right here in the cards. So you can also make vinegar. You can make a vinegar cleaning solution just using citrus peels and vinegar, but you can also make your own apple cider vinegar just from apple peels and apple cores throw it in with some water, leave it on your counter. If you'd like a more in-depth video on how to make apple cider vinegar, just let me know in the comments down below. And then once you're done with your scraps, if you wanna go the extra step, you can compost them. The next one is to actually regrow some of your kitchen scraps. So if you don't want to use them all for broth or you're like me and you just have too many, I cook a lot with fresh produce. A good example of this is lettuce, green onions, and celery. Whenever you cut the ends off of those, it's kind of like the knob that holds it all together. If it has sort of like a knob that looks like it was like cut at a root or something, uh, or if it has exposed roots like green onions do, if you submerge that in water, most of the time, if it's a healthy plant and it's organic, it will regrow, which is amazing because you're actually creating food from garbage. <laughs> and I've done this a few times with lettuce, with celery, things that I just kind of wanted to extend a little bit longer. And it actually does work. It takes a bit of time, but it's a fun experiment to do with kids as well, like a science experiment. The next thing you can do is to keep your glass jars from the food that you're purchasing at the grocery store and rinse those out, remove the labels, which I also have a video on you that I will link in the cards, um, and then just reuse those glass jars to store food. You can freeze food in glass. You have to be a little bit more careful freezing in glass, but it is 100% doable. And if you are someone who loves the way um, things look stored in glass, but you just don't have the money to go out and buy a full set of mason jars, you can just reuse the glass that is available to you at the grocery store when you buy food anyways. I love doing this and I think it's a great way to reuse them and repurpose them. 
The next one is to cut up any old t-shirts, towels, whatever kind of fabric that you have that you are no longer using, cut it up and repurpose it into rags, dust cloths, whatever you want. I like to do this with old t-shirts especially. Turn something that you normally wouldn't wear and you're going to throw away into reusable rags. This next one is a bit more complicated and in-depth, but I wanted to include it because if you have a sewing machine or even if you have hand sewing skills, you don't need a sewing machine to do this project, but you can make your own reusable menstrual pads out of old pajamas and towels. Now, personally, I haven't done this yet, but I've been saving up some old fleece pajamas and some old towels to do this project. So when I do, I probably will share it with you guys. Personally, I know that menstrual cups and even just buying reusable pads are pretty expensive. I do have a menstrual cup, but I also like to pair it with reusable pads. Next one is also another sewing type of project, but it's a really simple sewing project, and if you're looking for something to get started in sewing, uh, I really recommend this one because it's just basic stitch on three sides and you're done. And that is to make reusable produce bags out of old pillowcases and sheets. You could even use like a no sew glue or something like that if you really don't wanna learn how to sew or if you have like no access to a sewing machine. Um, I don't know how sturdy that would be, but I think it definitely would work. And if you don't have any of those things, like old linens or whatever, I find people have them all the time at garage sales and at thrift stores. So again, this is something that's not necessarily free, but you can get them for very cheap um, at thrift stores and stuff. I've gotten an entire, like, huge tablecloth for a dollar, and that's nothing compared to the fabric prices at actual fabric stores. So I always check thrift stores and things like that for large pieces of fabric to turn into things. Next one is to DIY your own cleaners. Now I mentioned this in the first tip that you can make your own vinegar cleaner out of citrus peels and vinegar and then water but it is super simple to make a lot of your own cleaners. You can use a lot of common household things to actually clean your house. The ones that I use the most are baking soda, castile soap, and vinegar. And I like to reuse old cleaner bottles to put them in. I'm sure that a lot of you already have vinegar and baking soda and things like that in your house already, so it doesn't actually require you to go out and buy things. The next one is to hang dry your laundry. So instead of putting everything in the dryer and it costing you money to dry things because it uses electricity to dry things and it actually uses quite a bit of electricity. If you have access to a yard or any kind of space where you can put up a line to dry clothes, this is done more commonly in other other countries besides the United States. A lot of places still do this today. It's not uncommon or unheard of, but personally I am from the United States and a lot of people don't do this. I have a bunch of like folding drying racks because my parents aren't really keen on the idea of me putting up a clothesline in the backyard, but I do have a bunch of like fold up drying racks and I dry probably 80% of my things on those drying racks. The other 20% is things like towels and large blankets that I just, I don't have a space for. The last free tip, and it's kind of the last free tip that I could think of up to this point, but if you would like to see more of these kinds of free things that you can do to reduce your waste, just let me know in the comments down below and I'll try and think of some more. But the last one is to collect rainwater. Now, you have to make sure it's legal because it's actually illegal in some places. I believe it's illegal in California and things. Places that are drought prone, it's not legal to collect rainwater. If you have some buckets, put them outside when it's really downpouring and you'll get 
full of clean usable water personally i like to do this in the spring and stuff to specifically water my plants because it's just so simple and easy that is the last free thing you can do to reduce your waste or consumption and i hope you guys enjoyed this video some of these tips may not be for everyone it's just kind of a rough idea i'd like to get you guys thinking about things that you can do to reduce your waste it's not a guideline you don't have to do every single one of these things it's just ideas and inspiration so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already be sure to hit that subscribe button and i will see you guys in my next video